All right, it's been almost two weeks since the explosion aboard SpaceX's CRS-7 mission, and we still don't know much. Um, here's what we do know for sure. Uh, the second stage popped. Uh, initially, it ruptured, gas started venting, the gas caught on fire, and it exploded. In the explosion, Dragon came free of the vehicle. Uh, no one is sure if this happened because it was programmed to do it, or just because of the structural failure at the tip of the rocket. We do know that Dragon's chutes did not deploy, and that there's been no word on Dragon's recovery. Now, it's quite likely that Dragon hit the water at terminal velocity and either was completely destroyed, or took on water and sank. Now, the first stage worked perfectly fine the entire time, until it decided to activate its flight termination system, uh, which is basically its self-destruct sequence. And that's why we saw it blow up. Just after the explosion, Elon tweeted that there was an overpressure event in the second stage liquid oxygen tank. He also tweeted that the cause seemed counterintuitive and that SpaceX was combing over the final flight data at the millisecond level. Now, initially it might seem like we're getting new information here from these tweets, but in actuality we are not. Overpressure event is just engineering speak for an explosion. And that's kind of what we all already saw. I mean, an overpressure event is literally just an explosion. What he means when he says SpaceX is coming through the final flight data millisecond by millisecond is that as the overpressure event or explosion happens, it permeates throughout the ship in a, in a wave. And as the wave passes by each sensor, it registers a sensor. So basically what they're trying to do is work backwards in time to where the very first sensor happened and look at where the second sensor happened and the third sensor. And then that way they can see how the, the wave propagated throughout the ship and find its focal point and hopefully the cause. Now, since the post-launch press conference, uh, where Gwen Shotwell basically confirmed what we already knew and said that she will let us know as soon as possible, we haven't received too much additional information from SpaceX. But on Tuesday, Elon did appear at the International Space Station R&D conference and gave us a little bit of an update. So obviously, it's a huge uh, load to to SpaceX, and um, and uh, or we, we take these missions incredibly seriously. Um, the Invest, the, everyone that can engage in the investigation at SpaceX is um, very, very focused on that. And um, in, in this case, the, the, the data does seem to be quite um, difficult to interpret. Like whatever happened is, is clearly not, not a sort of simple, straightforward uh, thing. Um, so we want to spend as much time as possible just reviewing the data obviously going over it with, with NASA and with the FAA and with um, a number of other customers and just sort of seeing um, what uh, feedback everyone has based on their prior experience um, to see if we can get to what the, uh, the most likely root cause is. Um, look, at, look at both what we think most likely happened um, and then anything that's a close call and try to uh, address all of those things and maximize the probability of success for future missions. At this point, really, the only thing that's really clear is that there was some kind of overpressure event in the upper stage liquid oxygen tank. Um, but the, the exact cause and the sequence of events, there's, there's still no uh, clear uh, theory that fits with all the data. Um, so we have to de determine if some of the data is uh, a measurement error of some kind or whether uh, there is actually a theory that matches the, the sort of what, what appear to be conflicting data points. As soon as we, we think we've got a, a clear line on, on what, what happened and we've sort of cross-checked it with as many experts as we can um, and we certainly appreciate the, the feedback from, from NASA on this front, it's very, very, very much appreciated. Um, the, we'll, we'll certainly put, put out that story. My only reticence about saying something quite yet is I don't want to say something that subsequently turns out to be a mis, um, misunderstanding of the situation. Right. The biggest thing that's needed in the, in the sort of short term is the ability to sort of gather all the data, um, create a very precise timeline so that you know, by, by the millisecond we know what each sensor was reading um, and we can um, correlate that with the ground video. And actually like one of the biggest challenges is matching the, the, the things to the exact time. You know, Because when you're talking about you know, a matter of milliseconds, um, you know, being able to say well, what is the ground track video compared to the data as received by the, um, you know, by, by the ground station from the rocket, and then taking into account for exactly the, the actual time taken to generate a packet of information. Um, what, what, you know, when was that sensor read? When was it 
and encode it into a packet, and when was that packet sent to the ground? Um, when, when you're dealing in, in milliseconds, that, that, all that stuff actually makes quite a big difference. Yeah. Um, so the, the, that's the, the, the biggest sort of effort we've um, been engaged in thus far, is just putting together a super detailed uh, timeline, um, and then just making sure that we have the sequence of, of events down as precisely as possible. That's what we've been working on. And, um, but, but actually, certainly, uh, with, with um, the interaction we've had with, with NASA and with us, it's actually been quite good thus far. Um, and we've explained that this is what we're doing, and, um, and then we, we very much welcome any uh, feedback or input uh, or review of the data that would lead us to a, a better understanding of the circumstances.